Right now I'm going to show you the best and quickest way to sort out gaps along your skirting board. <laughs> Hey guys, it's your man JB here and welcome to my channel. If this is your first time, then why don't you go ahead and subscribe. Right then, so to the point, we've got a bit of a gap along our skirting board and we need to sort that out. Now the gap along this skirting board isn't too bad, but you can see along here that there is some cracking going on. So there's a, you know, an obvious black line there where the skirting has moved away from the wall and, and broken that seal and also just a little bit on here. It really doesn't take much um, for you to really be able to see this. So we're going to sort this out and at the same time we're going to fill this gap just along here. Again it's just where you've got a little bit of movement from the step and the seal has broken from the step to the skirting. So if you're going to be filling a gap like this along the skirting, it's really important that you do use the right product. Now there are many, many different products out there that will claim to fill those gaps, and that's brilliant. But one thing that you don't want to use, one product that you don't want to use is silicone. So around woodwork like this, um, that you're potentially going to paint on top, do not use silicone, it does tend to leave a bit of a mess, a lot of paint will not stick to it um, and you'll have a hell of a job trying to get it off. So the product that we do want to use is cork. Now I'm not talking about the soft wooden stuff, I'm talking about cork, okay? Cork is what we want to use. Or as I've said already, other type of, another type of product. Now I have pulled out a few products from the van here so you can see these would all be suitable for filling a gap between the skirting and the wall. This is my favourite one, this uh, polyfiller um, decorator's cork. Now this takes an hour um, before you can paint over it, so that's quite good. It's quick drying, you can use it indoors, outdoors. This product is very similar. Um, again, paintable with one hour, you can use it indoors, outdoors. This type of product, let's put these two together. Now these type of products uh, basically tend to be a, a flexible filler. So that's really what cork is going to do. Um, so these are flexible gap polyfiller and flexible decorators filler. So they would do the job as well. Here's another type of cork. Um, I've used this one a bit in the past. It's only for indoors. Uh, but it's a little bit dry uh, in my opinion. It's instantly paintable So in theory it dries very quickly or it is a very dry product Here's uh, again just uh, another cork and another one here uh, Paintable over paintable in 30 minutes. So this is always worth checking because this one here, again, this is a great product and you can paint over it, but you do have to wait 24 hours for this one to go off before you can paint over it. So uh, do check that. But as I've said already, you do have a wide range of different products you can use. Um, my favorite and the one that I tend to use and I'm gonna be using for this little video is the Polycell Polyfiller Decorators Cork. It's really my go-to product, if I'm honest. Well, just before we get started, I just want to point out that obviously you will need to get yourself a cork gun, which looks something like this. Now, when you purchase one of these, it would be a good idea to get the longer, or get the longer version, which this is, and you'll notice that um, a lot of products um, well, some products are in 380, I think that's a, a 380, yep, 380 milliliter tube, and these are, uh, I think these tend to be three, there we go, 310. So you can see they are quite different in length. Now you can buy a corking gun which is shorter and will only take this size tube. Um, but the only problem then is if you buy one of the longer ones, 
you're not going to get it in. So always a good idea, buy the longer um, corking gun and this style, this tends to be the, the best sort of thing. I'll put a link for this in the description box below. Now if we wanted to be really lazy about this, what we could do, we could get some cork and we could just run it into those little gaps there. And do you know what? Yes, it would fill it. It would make it look a little bit better than what it is now, but it wouldn't be right. And I believe if you're gonna do a job, let's do it right. I'm sure, um, I'm sure that used to be a, a slogan or um, for, a, for a DIY store. But anyway, um, we want to do it right. That's, um, that's definitely important. And, and you know, it, it's quite rough, to be honest. And if we just put, um, if we just fill this gap, it's still going to feel rough. And if it feels rough, it probably looks rough as well. So let's start by just cleaning this bit here. Now I can see already, and you might be able to see there that this is cork. Can you see it's a bit bendy and it's soft? Um, so that was corked before, but there's not a lot in there and there hasn't been a massive amount of movement. So what we're going to do, and I'm using a, um, a scraper here. This is a quite a sharp scraper. Um, this is like a, a paint sort of strip of paint and it did have quite a sharp edge to start with but what I tend to do is constantly sand my scrapers so they do end up getting quite sharp. So what we're doing here is just working along that corner just to get that cork out. That's not bad. I'm just going to create a massive gap here don't want to have to fill a really big gap and that's quite a, a, a valid point actually we don't want to end up with a really wide gap because the uh, if we start putting cork in a very wide gap it, it will have a, a tendency to sink so that is actually just right I think just go along that edge there there we go so let's look at this bit now and what we can see has happened here. It's been filled, it's been corked and then it's been painted and then there's been some movement in the skirting and the skirting's moved and it's basically pulled the cork away from the wall um, and that's what you can see here. So if I just pull that back you can see that you know that has come away from the wall it's taken a bit of paint off. So. What we can do here, once again, is just get that scraper in and get that cork out. So I have got another tool which is quite nice and this is my Birdie uh, decorator's tool. This is really nice. I'll put a link for this down in the description box below. Really nice tool and really good for doing these kind of jobs. Now I don't really need to go too mad here because actually along here is quite good. It's only this end bit where the gap has kind of come about. And I don't want to make too much work for myself. There we go, so that's enough there. Just give that a little dust. I mean it's looking better already isn't it? You've got to agree. We'll have a go at this bit along here now. Now, again, I think it's a, a similar thing. This has, you know, there's quite a crack in there and I would imagine it is where the, the skirting has moved slightly. Yeah, and there's actually quite a big gap, to be honest, between the skirting and the wall. Yeah, look, you can see that as I start to pull that cork out it's actually revealing quite a quite a big gap there so for the purpose of this video this is perfect because we're going to be able to get a really good idea of how to cork a decent gap now this is really common this kind of size gap is really common in skirting boards particularly if it's a, an older property or maybe not an older property but it hasn't been decorated for a long time.
what you'll find when you're scraping this out, it will leave some cork on the wall there. You can see the scraper is hitting something, but it's not the skirting. So that's a little bit of cork there. So we just want to make sure that we get all of that off. And whether we pull it out or it just falls down, doesn't matter as long as it's clean before we put the new lot of cork in there. Just be a little bit careful with this. You don't want to put a big scratch or gash in the wall. Just take your time. There's no rush. Okay, that's as far as I'm going to go with that. Because by the time I've put a little bit of paint here, that will pretty much disappear. But you'll probably agree that that won't disappear. So we really need to cork that. But we've definitely got, run your finger along it, make sure that it doesn't feel lumpy and then you've definitely got all the cork off, all the old cork. We are almost ready to fill this, but before we do, I'm going to run a little bit of sandpaper just along the top of the skirting so it's ready to paint once I apply the cork. What I don't want to do is apply the cork and then have to sand it. Also, another thing to bear in mind, if you're sanding down or if you've exposed any timber, any MDF, because a lot of these skirtings are MDF these days, um, but if you've exposed the timber, you will need to treat it or paint it with a primer undercoat. Now do that before you apply the cork. So get all your cork out, open up the gap, apply the undercoat, then cork it, then we'll paint it. For the purpose of this video, I'm just going to sand it very lightly along the gap where the cork is going to be applied. But if you are filling and sanding your whole skirting, then obviously you'll need to sand everything. And if you want to check another video of mine, you can see exactly how to do that and the best way um, to prepare your skirting for painting. Now this skirting is in good condition, so I don't really need to go mad with sanding this little bit here. I just want to roughen it up a little bit. And for that, I'm using a piece of 120 paper. Oh yeah. Just along that edge there, where I'm going to apply the cork. If you do need to, if it is necessary, then just run it lightly along the wall as well, just in case there are any little lumps there. But um, if you've got yourself a decent scraper, then you should have been able to get those off with that. So that's nice and smooth and roughened up just a little bit. And the same here and the same here. Okay, we'll give it a little clean. Love this brush. This is my Hamilton dusting brush. Like it? Want to get one? I'll put a link down there for you, alright. So we'll clear that gap. There we go, that's definitely dust free. Here's one I opened earlier. This is one that um, I've been actually using today and on the job that I'm on at the moment. Um, yeah, I've got about a third left of that. And these longer tubes really are good. If you're doing a lot of corking, um, it's quite a good idea to get the longer ones. I do actually think the longer ones are more for trade and the smaller ones a little bit more for kind of home DIY. But as I say, they both do a good job. Now I might have cut the end of this just a little bit too big, but you can see there, um, cut it at a bit of an angle, probably went too much of an angle there as well. Um, for this job, too much of an angle, too big a hole, to be honest, but um, I've been filling some big cracks, I can assure you. 
and a little tip if you are using this type of product uh, they do have a rather large nozzle that goes on it and it is the same with this product and it is the same with this product and um, what I tend to do with these is actually use a an uncut nozzle which doesn't have a hole in the end at all and I use that I push that on the end of that nozzle to seal it and that works spot on right then now when you're doing this just be mindful of how big the gap is and potentially how much cork is coming out of here and you don't necessarily need to run a bead all the way along if we've got quite a big hole here because what you can do is actually spread it along that gap um, if I just put a big kind of length of cork along there I'm going to end up with loads of leftover cork and it's going to get all over my fingers and everything so just be mindful of, of how much you put on so we want to hold it at a bit of an angle like this we don't want to do it at 90 degrees because it will get stuck and it will won't move very well so hold it in this position probably about 30 40 degrees at the most from your gap and we're just going to apply a little bit of light pressure and I can start to see it coming out. I know there's a few gaps there and just pulling it towards you. So do pull it towards you and not away from you again because it won't actually go in as well if you do it the other way. Now you can see here, it almost looks like I've missed a bit but I know there's enough here to actually push into that gap. Now here's the magic tool that we're going to use to get that into the gap and it's right here, there it is, there's your magic tool. Now if you want to just dampen your finger, it's a good idea, but it's not crucial. So all we're going to do from here with one finger is just push that finger right into that gap and pull it along. So I've still got a bit on my finger, I'm just gonna push it into that gap right there. That's it, and just Use your finger along there just to clean that off. And you'll notice that that looks pretty good. I have missed a bit on the front there, so let's just do that now. These same rules will apply, so just, I don't need a massive amount. It's only a small gap. And just push that down first, and then back up. Just a little bit more on there. A bit more on the top. There. Perfect. If you want to, you can just pop your finger on your damp cloth here and just run that along but make sure you're not pushing your finger too much into that gap there just nice and gently just so we remove any cork that you've spread either on the step or on the skirting all right let's do let's do this bit here exactly the same um, we'll probably start about here there we go so a bit of a Bit of a bigger gap this one, I've put a little bit more cork on here, but same thing, just like that. See look, there was a bit too much there, so I've ended up with a, a fair bit on my finger. But we just run the cloth along there, like that. So carrying on here then, I'm gonna use this bit of excess cork. And what I'm going to do is literally just push that into that gap as I move my finger along and it's pretty much all gone that having that damp cloth is really good just for wiping it off your fingers as well because you want to make sure your fingers nice and clean as you're rubbing it along the line there or smoothing the cork so let's just put a tiny bit more here there we go Bit more of a bit more of a gap here, so I'm going to have to squeeze the trigger a bit more, get a little bit more cork in the gap. So about there, there we go. 
So I'm just going to take that back that way. And that's just filled that little end bit there. Wipe my finger off. Push it nice and hard into that gap. Just like that. I'll just finish that just by running that damp cloth along there. And it's just taken a little bit off that was on the skirting. But that looks pretty good. Happy with that. So there we go, one gap along the skirting, all filled and ready for painting. Well, after at least an hour anyway. If you want to check out the best way to prepare a skirting for painting, I will put a link up here right now. Also, there'll be a link to the video at the end of this video. I hope you found this tutorial video helpful, interesting. Maybe you learned something, maybe you didn't. Let me know, what did you think? Leave your comments down below. Give us a thumbs up as well. If you like the video, that would be fantastic. If you want to see more videos just like this one, then go ahead and subscribe and also hit that bell icon so you receive notifications when I release more content just like this. Fantastic guys, see you on the next video.